there is something in Peter's heart that he could reflect on at that time. And he says to the Lord, you know, look into my heart. And sometimes we could even say of ourselves, Lord, search my heart, know my thoughts and see my desires if we want to replace that to see my desire towards you. You know, see if my, my love for you is true. See if I am measuring to who you say, who I say that I am in you. See, am I measuring up to the things that I'm declaring and, and I'm representing when I'm saying that I love the Lord Jesus and that I love the people of God and that I love my family and that I'm, I'm practicing that and I'm demonstrating love. It, can this be seen in our lives? When we ask, when if we are asked this question by the Lord, lovest thou me more than thee? Because if we love the Lord Jesus more than anything in our, in our lives, more than our cars, our homes, our children, our spouses, um, our jobs, positions, whatever it is, more than ourselves. If we love the Lord in such a strong and powerful way, then we could easily say, like Peter says, Lord, you know my, you know, you know, look into my heart, you know me, right? Peter says, Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you, Jesus said, feed my sheep. So there was a resolution there with, between him and the Lord because the Lord didn't ask him again, Peter loveth me more than thee. Once he, he went into that this to, into that discourse with Jesus, there was a, 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 an end there to that discussion when Jesus said, okay, feed my sheep. So the questions that we're asking ourselves tonight is this question, lovest, do we have, as, as the, I am my beloved, his, his desire is towards me, is our desire is towards our beloved. And in 1 Peter, in 1 Peter 3, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 2, verse 16. There's three things that separate us from the love of God. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And we can see this in 1 John 3, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not the father, but is of the world. So what is it then? that takes us captive so that we're not reflecting, that our desire do not reflect this love to our beloved, that we're saying that we love. You know, so many times this love that we ought to reflect is being taken up because of the pride of life. And then you say, okay, well, what is the pride of life? What is, what, what is the lust of the flesh? What is the, the lust of the eyes? You know, the lust of the flesh is, is things like ad, ad, fornication. That's one of the things that we sin against ourselves, our bodies, fornication, adultery, you know, hate, um, idol worshiping, witchcraft. These are, these are lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. You look, you know, covetousness, being jealous, wanting what someone else have, the pride of life self-aggrandization, um, self-righteous, um, wanting power, wanting um, um, riches and, and, and glory in beauty and things like that. These things hold us hostage from reflecting a desire for our Lord Jesus Christ, a desire to be in communion with him, a desire to be in oneness with him. We are, we are reciprocating the love of God in a very powerful way where it is demonstrated in its true form. These things hold us hostage. There are times even in our lives where we have been denied certain things, even in childhood. Probably like me, for example, um, I come from a large family. Um, I had, my mom had, had um, eight children, single mom. And a lot of times, like I, I was, hungry a lot of times, you know? So you come to America and there is food everywhere and you could have whatever you want, no matter what time of day it is that you want. So if, if I'm not careful, I could get caught up 
and, and into overeating or become gluttony, gluttonous because I feel like I was, I was deprived of it in my youth because there was never enough food because my mom is feeding eight children. And so I come to America and then I have everything I want and I become obese and, and, and overeat because I'm never satisfied. That desire that I have is never satisfied. So that's something that, and that's just an example of something that could happen to us in childhood. Sometimes we have in, in our adulthood, we have relationships that are broken, you know, um, I also remember as I, uh, as soon as I got out of school, I went into the clubs, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places, you know, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. I was, I was having all of those things um, working against me as a young, as a young girl, you know, out of high school, because, you know, there are so many things that I felt that I needed. I felt like I could find that love and acceptance in the clubs, in the nightclubs, the drinking and, and all the different things going on. There's a, there's a whole set of, of people that just, you hanging out together, you're experiencing certain things, you're exchanging laughter and life and you're just doing all of these things. And so you feel like you are loved, but it is a lie. The only true love, the only true love is the love of Christ. That is the only true love. That's the intimacy that we looked, we're looking at in Songs of Solomon. This is this coming together. This is this binding up together. This is, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. That's what this is. So it says, I am my beloved and his desires towards me. And our, the questions we ask in ourselves is now, our desires need to be for our Lord, for our King, for our Savior. And, and, and in Romans 8, it says, what shall separate me from the love of God? Let's go over there and look at that real quick. What shall separate me from the love of God? Hallelujah. Because so many times there's so many things that separate us from the love of God. So as we're looking at, at, um, at I am my beloved and his desire towards me, let's look at some of the things that can separate us from the love of God. What shall we say to these things? Is God for us? Who can be against us? He did not spare his own son. Okay. Let me see here. Something. Okay, here we go. It's in, in um, Romans 8, verse 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loves us, right? Here we go again, to him who loves us. Now, we're back in um, Song of Solomon um, 7, verse 10. I am my beloved and is desired towards me. Here it is in, in um, Romans 8, verse 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who who love us. This is the same Christ we're talking about. For I am persuaded, this is Paul now saying, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, no things present, nor things to come, no height, nor death, nor any other cre created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amazing love. Amazing love. The Lord Jesus has for us. And so we have a responsibility to reciprocate that love. And the challenge for us is these three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Sometimes also we experience, uh, we want to feel like we are somebody, like we belong. And the, these are the pride of life. We want to feel like if we have certain amount of money, we're, we're gonna be somebody. If we have a certain title, if I have a title as a doctor or, or, or as, as, as some kind of a big name person, president or something like that, I am finally somebody now. That's the pride of life. If I have um, a, 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 um, um, children, there are some women that may be struggling with having children and it's like, okay, now I'm somebody because I could have a child because I'm, I have a child. Or there are so many different areas um, with, our, with our young people, you know, experiencing challenges because they cannot find, the, find love because there's so many um, ways, go, things going on right now that tell you it's okay to be promiscuous. It's okay to have more than one relationship going on at a time. And there's all of these search and these desires that, that we're, we, that's working us over just so that we could feel like we fit, like we, we are somebody, that we are accepted, that we are beloved. And here Christ is clearly telling us, 
His desire is towards me. His desire is towards you. Now, what is his desire? St. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him will not perish, but have everlasting life, abundant life, joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what that's talking about. The desire, that's the desire. The desire that we do not live in sin. Christ who knew no sin became sin so that in him we have become the righteousness of God. How beautiful is that? He knew no sin, but over 2000 years ago, he knows that me and you was gonna need him. He knew that we was gonna be so wretched that he's gonna have to pull us out of our sin. Some of us were suicidal. Some of us had all kinds of different things going on with us, depression, anxieties, we have fear, we have anger, we have resentment, we have bitterness, we have unforgiveness. We have all of these things that holds us hostage and Jesus come and he says listen my desire is towards you my desire is to help you with that forgive unforgiveness issue that you're having because someone abused you at a, at a young age or, or 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 people have mistreated you and and just did all kind of horrible and terrible things to you some of it is so it's so horrible to talk about but Jesus is saying to you my desire is towards you I want you to be free I want you to experience true love. I want you to know that you are accepted. I want you to know that you're not a byword. I want you to know that you have purpose. I want you to know that you are, uh, 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 I have a love for you that is so strong that it, it, will, it, will, it will take you through anything, no matter how difficult the situations are. That's who our God is. That's this love. His desire towards us is that. So no matter where you are in life, no matter what it is that you're going through, here, the scriptures is clearly telling you, his desire is towards you. And trust me, no matter what is happening in your life, no matter how far you think you are, no matter how unlovable you think you are, you are never that unlovable for Christ. You are never unlovable for, for Christ because he loves you first. He loves you before you were even conceived. He, he loved you before your parents even thought about you. So this love that, that we're talking about, this beloved love that is appropriated to all of us, me, you, every person on the planet, it is a strong and powerful love that is able to keep us through no matter to any situations we're going through. Even right now with everything that's going on with us, and the experiences that we're having, and we look at the things that we're experiencing, it is so difficult. And it could even lead us to depressive thoughts, feeling like we're in a box and we'll never get out. Like, like this, with the virus, the pandemic, and with the economy, and with, with family, and the church closed down, and everything, it's, it's like we're in this box, and it seems like we can't get out of it. But that is not what is true to us as the body of Christ. What's true to us as the body of Christ is that we are in no box because the beloved, his desire is towards us. And because of that strong, powerful love, we cannot be boxed in by anything or anyone or any circumstances, no matter what it looks like. So to, today, as we take a look at, tonight, as we take a look at our response to the beloved, because this, this, this um, Songs of Solomon is intimately talking about Christ and the church. And it's talking about that love, that reciprocating love. But if you notice the scripture, God always tell you his love verse. He tell you that he, he gives a description of his love. He says, I love you this way. I love you that way. I love you because of this. I love you because of that. And now we now have to reflect and say, okay, is, am, I, am, I, am I doing my part in this relationship that I've placed myself into? We are in a covenant as the body of Christ. And, and chapter seven uh, on Songs of Solomon is reflective of that covenant. It's called the expression of praise. The expression of praise. And so when we love somebody, even if you think back, to the first time you fall in love and like you can't stop talking about the person. You wanna to talk to them all the time. You wanna see them all the time. If you don't see them for a long time, you start getting upset and you start wondering what's going on and then you, all kind of thoughts start coming. That's that intimacy. That's that 
that love, that strong, powerful love, that love that it, it just makes you, you, you just want to stay in his presence. You don't want to leave. You don't want to move. So as we think about it, your desire, chapter, um, chapter seven, verse 10, I am my beloved and his desire is towards me. Now, let us set our desires towards him because there's nothing that God will withhold from us. The scripture says there's no good thing that he withholds from those who love him and those who are called are called into his purpose. No good thing will he withhold. Now, sometimes, and I spoke earlier about some of the challenges that we have, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, fornication, um, lies, anger, resentment, rejection, all of these things, wanting power, wanting money, wanted to feel like um, you're better than everyone else and pride, pride works so, so strong in some of our lives that it, it, just, it just takes over everything that we do. And those are the things that separate us from the love of God. But Christ has made a way for us. And he tells us if we come to him, he says, none that come to him will he turn away. So as we look at the songs of Solomon, and we're opening up our hearts to accommodate this love that the Lord is reaching out to us, to tell us, to, to, ref, to so that our hearts could receive and experience this love. Let us think clearly. What is it that is holding us hostage? Is it the lust of the flesh? Is it the lust of the eyes? Is it the pride of life? What is it that's holding us hostage where we as the church, the body of Christ is so distant from the beloved, the one that loves us so that his desire is towards us? Because if we think about it, there is definitely something separating us from this love because it is not reflective in even, even in our coming together as the body of Christ, even now in our nation, the church is one of the most divided institution in our nation right now. So what is it that, where is this love that Christ is saying that we ought to reflect what happened to it? And some of us have never even experienced it because we are trapped in something that has happened to us in a relationship or something happened in the childhood or not experiencing love from our parents or, or, or different types of situation. And, and some, of, some of us are from the islands and we, some of us never hear our parents say that we love you. And so for us, um, we understand and we know that they love us, but it's still, you come to America and you hear people or parents um, children and parents saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. They leave and they say, I love you. They come and they say, I love you. And so we become, we begin to adopt the culture here. And then it's like, okay, now we, we realize and that, oh my God, I don't know if my parents love me. I don't know if my mom loved me. I don't know if my dad really loved me because they never said it. But when we were growing up in the, in the, in the, in the islands, and this is for people that are in the islands, uh, even people in our, in, in America, it happens that they don't say that they love each the parents don't say that they love their children, but um, what I'm saying is that because we we you know in when we're in the islands and we get used to it to us, I don't even think it was a question whether our parents love us or not. Sometimes, um, mostly we would look at the treatment and see how we were treated to determine whether we are loved or not. Not necessarily because they said they love us, but we come here and we want to hear that. We want to hear it from our spouses. We want to hear it from our children. We want to hear it from everybody. We want to hear that we are loved. So there's definitely something very strong and powerful that the enemy uses to keep us from being able to appropriate this love into our lives where we could actually accept the love of Christ and to, ref and to, and to respond to it and to give it back in return. Because how do we reflect God's love to others? By showing and demonstrating humility by demonstrating and showing um, compassion to others by feeding the hungry by clothing the naked by visiting the sick by by going into the world and preaching the gospel of jesus christ because you don't want people to die and go to hell by reflecting god in in his true form where people around can see and know that there is a god and this God loves. And this love that 
that that the God that God has for us is not tainted. As we we took, we we heard um, um, Pastor Pastor Tyrone um, Thompson spoke spoke to us on Sunday, and he was speaking about the love of God. That it is it is the agape. It is a it is a love that. It, it is it is reflective of what is true. It, it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it's not prideful. It is not self-centered, it's not self-seeking. That's the love that, that the Lord has for us. That's the love that Jesus is saying to us tonight. This is his desire towards us, that we would love him with all our hearts, all our might, all our soul, everything that is within us. And he doesn't stop there. We now are responsible to love our neighbors as ourselves. So tonight, I'm challenging you. Look into your heart. I look into looking into my heart too, and I'm just talking to you, I'm talking to myself too. Where is my desire? Where is my what is the object of my desire? I should say. Is the object of my desire the Lord Jesus Christ? Is the object of my, my desire his church? Is the object of my desire the fulfillment of my purpose? And what is my purpose? Why am I here? How do I glorify God with my life? How does my life reflect the love of God? Where it is seen, it is heard, it is tangible, it can be touched, it can be tasted, it can be seen in everything that I do and say. And so as you, as you think on these things, and one of the things you can do, you ask, you know, pray, ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit, reveal to me, show me how am I loving, how am I loving you? Um, what is missing? What am I doing wrong? What is it that I'm, I'm, I'm falling short on? Where in my life is this lack of love? And if you pray with a sincere and true heart, I promise you, he will show you. He will show you what it is when you are ready to receive it. Because sometimes we pray and we ask about something, but we're not truly ready to receive it back. We really don't want to hear the answer. We just ask the ask. But if you truly desire in your heart today to see, to reflect God's love, not that he, that, not that you just know his desire for you, but you also know your desire for him. And that your desire is as now passed from the lust of the flesh. It has passed from the lust of the eyes. It has passed from the, the, the pride of life. And it is now engaged in God, in the work of his hand, engaged in the fruits of the spirit, how we speak. How do we respond when someone come up against us? What are we reflecting? Are we reflecting love? Are we reflecting hatred? What is it that is going on with us so that when we are reflecting the love of God, it comes true. It comes forth in its true form. So as we come together tonight, we wanna reflect on ourselves. We wanna say to ourselves, what is going on with you? Like David said to his soul, and he talked to his soul, and he says, soul, why are you disquieted within me? We're going to say to our soul, soul, what is your desire? What is it that, how are you reflecting your love towards the Lord Jesus Christ? How are you reflecting your love towards people? How are you reflecting your love in your worship, in your prayer life, in the way you are in your community, the way you are in your, in your family? the way you are in, 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 the, in your responsibility and your roles inside the ministry, outside the ministry, how are you reflecting it at work? Sometimes we do things in, at work that we're thinking that it's okay to do and it's not okay to do. All of these, every single area of our life ought to reflect the, the love of God. And so as we come together as the people of God tonight, we desire to be the ones that reflect our desires are reflecting love towards the Lord Jesus Christ, towards the body of Christ, towards our family, towards our children, towards our communities, towards our nation, towards the, the world around us. All of these areas, every single area of our life ought to come, 
how to encompass love in a reflective form. And it is very challenging. It is very hard to do because of the things that come against us. Sometimes some things have, have been so detrimental to our lives. Some, some things that traumas that we experience, it's been so difficult. And to try to navigate our way through these traumas and then to be able to love in a true form, is very challenging, but there's nothing too hard for our God. And if in, in our hearts we desire to truly move from these things and to really embrace, embrace love in its true form, by letting go of the things that hold us hostage, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, we're willing to let those things go. Whether it's idolatry, sometimes it's witchcraft, sometimes it's fornication, sometimes it's, it's anger, sometimes it's rejection, rebellion, unforgiveness. Sometimes it's just wanting things that other people have, covetousness. Sometimes it's wanting to be um, successful, um, to, to, to have money and power so that you could be, so there's nothing wrong with having money and power. What is wrong with it is when you are not reflecting the love of God, when it's just something so that you could look good about. But we need money to spread the gospel. We need money so that the things of God can get done, so that even for our own livelihoods, we need money. So money is not the thing here. The thing is the desires of it. What is it that we're doing when we place in our desire in things? Sometimes it's our home. Sometimes it's a car, sometimes it's clothes, sometimes it's shopping, sometimes it's food. You know, some, there's so many things that take us hostage, that holds us, and it's hard to break loose. But we're coming tonight to break loose. We're going to break loose in the name of Jesus. We're going to break loose because we know the love of our soul deserves for us to, to be able to embrace his love in a true form and to reflect it. To be to reciprocate it and to say, Lord, and there's a song that says, Lord, I love you, how I love you. Let me sing because I'm not a good singer. But Lord, I love you, how I love you. I love you more and more each day. You know, you are the you're the air I breathe. How beautiful is that? That's like falling in love. When you fall in love with somebody, it's like you say, You're the air that I breathe. Roses are red, violets are blue, you know, all of these things. We come up with these poet poetry stuff when we're in love. Let's fall back in love. Let's get back to that place. Um, I think there's a song that says, take me back dear Lord to the place where I first received you. I feel like I'm so far from you, Lord, but still I hear you calling me. This is what this is. I am my beloved and his desire towards me. That's that still, I hear you calling me, Lord. I see you drawing me. I see you pulling me into you. And as we reflect on Songs of Solomon and all this love, and all of this passion in these verses, in these words, just, just drooping from the lips with just so much beauty and grace. I am lovesick. Are you lovesick? Let us be lovesick. Let us chase after our uh, the lover of our soul. Let us chase after our beloved. Let us, let us put everything aside that is holding us hostage and let us pursue him with passion. We're talking about in pursuit of righteousness, in hot pursuit, I'm sorry, of righteousness and love. This is the love that we're talking about. We're in hot pursuit of love. We're in hot pursuit of our beloved because we want to reflect his love. We want to pour our love back into him in so many ways. We want our hearts to be consumed, just full of passion for him. Just, just want to talk about him all day. Like people got to tell you to be quiet because you're talking so much. Or, or things that you're doing, it just reflect God's love in such a strong and powerful way. Don't hide yourself away now. Don't withdraw into yourself now. Now is the time to come out and to this and to show the love of God. There are so many people around us that need it right now. People are suffering in a really bad way. People are lonely and depressed. People are angry and bitter because they cannot deal with the things that are happening right now. This is a time for the church to rise up. And how we rise up, we rise up because of love. For God so loved the world that he gave. So we're going to so love our Lord that we will give. We will give of ourselves. We will put evil desires aside. We will put aside the lust of the flesh. We'll put aside the lust of the eyes. And we'll put aside the, the pride of life. And we will seek, a true, seek the love of God in its true form. So I thank God for you tonight. As we talk about, I am my beloved 
and his desire is towards me. Are you gonna put your beloved desire tonight? Are you gonna put your beloved desire tonight towards him? Are you gonna put your desire towards your beloved tonight, I should say? Are you gonna seek him out? I heard pastor say this the other day, well, I used the scripture the other day, when you seek, he said, when you, when you seek the Lord and you search for him with all of your heart, you will find him. And the key word there is all of your heart, you will find him. This is what we've been talking about in Songs of Solomon. It's pursuing the Lord with all of your heart, not some, not a piece here and a piece there, because you gotta, you gotta get, you, you don't have, you don't want to fully put your two feet in and, and totally uh, wrap yourself in, and, and totally give your heart over to him. But all of your heart, when you give him all of you, you will find him, all of you, not some. Nothing, let nothing separate you from the love of God. Let nothing and no one hold you hostage. Let not past experience or present experience hold you hostage. Let your love flow. Have you ever been to church and you leave and you feel like, oh my God, I wanted to do so many things and I didn't get it done. You might have wanted to just worship in a true form by singing or by praising and opening up your mouth or even dancing and you never did it because something held you hostage in that service and you weren't able to reflect what it is that you really desire. Sometimes these are the things, these are the same things that keep us from reflecting God's love because something is holding us hostage. If you want to identify what it is that is holding you hostage, ask the Holy Spirit. He will tell you, he will show you. And when he shows you that you pray and you ask him to remove it so that you could truly love him. We want to love the Lord from his perspective, not ours, because we don't know what true love is. We see all forms of love and some of them are just ridiculous. So if we want to know what true love really is, it comes from the heart of God. And the only person who could show us that is our Lord Jesus Christ. And he demonstrated that over 2000 years ago and even before that. So we are coming together tonight and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna pray tonight against anything that is holding us hostage. And we're gonna ask um, Santa Cla, um to, to pray for us tonight against the things that are holding us hostage so that we do not experience the love of God. Santa Cla, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Um, Father God, we thank you for your blessing. Santacla, you're mute. You have to unmute. I think um, he's muted, so we're just going to pray. Father, we just thank you right now. We just thank you, Lord, for the power that you have given us in releasing us. You have given us the power. And you said, whatsoever we bind on the earth is bound in heaven. And whatsoever we loose on the earth is loose in heaven. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bind up the mindset and thought patterns that have been holding us hostage so we do not love you. So we do not even understand your love because our minds are blocked and our hearts cannot receive your love. Father, we ask you right now that whether whatever it is that is holding us hostage, whether it's to traumas from childhood or adulthood relationships or 
things that have hurt us and distorted love to us. Father, we ask you that for the true revelation knowledge of love to be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus, that the eyes of our hearts will be enlightened to your truth. So we will know the hope to which you have called us, that you have called us to love. You have called us to fellowship. You have called us to an intimate um, relationship, a reflecting of love and, and transforming a transforming of our heart to be able to love one another as you love us, Father. We know, Lord God, that our adversary is a murderer, a thief, and a robber, and wants to take our desires and our passions and to use it. But we are declaring tonight that our passion and our desire will be towards our beloved, the Lord Jesus Christ, and him only will our desires and our affections be towards. Father, we're, uh, we're asking you tonight that every place in our thoughts, our imagination, in our lives where the, you are not the object of our desire, that all those things will come down. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life will be destroyed. And that our passions, oh God, our hearts cry, Father, would be to, to desire you, to love you, to be in fellowship with you, to be, oh God, in a place where we are inter we're intertwined in a love relationship and there's nothing separating us, not height, not depth, not demons, not angels, not principalities, not powers, not things past, not things present, nor things to come. Nothing separating us from your love, not our children, not our car, not our homes, not relationship, not, not, not anything, not money, not fame, nothing separating us, oh God, from your love. Because we, oh God, are purposing in our hearts tonight, Father, that we are going to seek you out. We're going to pursue you. We're going to chase after you. We're going we're gonna to stay in intimate fellowship and communion with you, oh God, because you are our beloved. And we know, oh God, that your desire is towards us. And you, oh God, greater you that is in us than he that is in the world. So we already overcome because Jesus Christ already overcome. And we already know, oh God, that anything that we bind on the earth is bound in heaven. So we bind up every mental oppression, everything that is holding us hostage in our mind, every deep hurt that has taken over our hearts, every resentment and anger and bitterness that is holding us hostage and keeping us from loving you in a true form, Father. We break down those walls and those barriers. The places in our lives, oh God, even as children and as adults, we, we do not feel loved or accepted. Father, we ask you, oh God, that you will destroy those barriers and those boundaries that hold us hostage and that we will be released to love you from a true place, oh God. We'll be released to love you with a sincere heart, oh God. We ask you, Father, that everything, oh God, that, that the enemy has used against us to come to our memory and to remind us of wretchedness and things that we have done, oh God, that we have, 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 have not uh, maybe have violated others or done that are wrong or even displeasing to you. Father, we ask you, Lord God, that you will, you will destroy the works of darkness. You'll destroy lying spirit that wants to lie to us and tell us that we are no good, that we're not worthy to be loved, that we're not worthy to experience anything good. Father, we ask you to destroy those lies in the name of Jesus and that we will receive your truth, that we are accepted in the beloved and that your desire is towards us. Father, we thank you that your desire is towards us. We thank you that we are accepted in the beloved. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us of yourself. And we're asking you, Father, that even as we have given, you have given of yourself to us, that we will be able to reflect to you. We will return to you. We will love you, Lord. Help this to be our mantra, that we love the Lord, our God, with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our minds, with all our strength, with everything that is within us, and that we will love our neighbors as ourselves. Father, we thank you for this time tonight. We give you all glory, all honor, all praise, and all thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank God. I thank God for you joining tonight. And we're just going to have one song play before we close out tonight um, to just continue on in our worship tonight. Um, we thank God for you. Um, God bless you, whether you're um, on Facebook, 
on Zoom. Thank God for you joining tonight. Um, I hope you were blessed by um, the things that were said tonight. Um, Pastor wasn't able to make it on tonight. He had um, an emergency came up. And so I, we thank God for you joining tonight. We're just going to have a song play, a worship song as we close out tonight. Stay tuned. Don't go off yet.
Drinks give our fragrance at our gates are pleasant fruits, all manner, new and old, which I have laid up for you, my beloved. Which I have laid up for you, my beloved. How beautiful is that? Is there there's so much hope? Like it is such an awesome thing to be loved by God. So I thank God for you joining tonight, and I just want to say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his glorious countenance upon you and grant you peace. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining tonight in our worship. And I just declare that this is a time of love, falling in love, basking in the love, which the Lord has laid up for us is beloved. God bless you. <laughs>